Hey everybody, welcome back into another edition of Rapid Recap. He is Steve Mark, he's Greg Smith, I'm Zach Carpenter coming to you from Memorial Stadium on Tuesday where Mickey Joseph had what I thought was his most loaded press conference in terms of sharing insights and philosophies, most loaded of the year, most insightful of the year, at least one of them. Um, he shared a lot of big picture stuff. Um, he has seven games under his belt now as the head coach, as the leader of this program in the, in the interim role. Um, I mean, first off, he said there have been no discussions between him and Nebraska um, about his status as a head coach candidate, uh, as a candidate to be the next permanent, permanent guy. Um, so Trev Alberts has not updated him. Um, or had any sort of conversation like, well, we'll reevaluate after the season. Uh, he, he pretty much said, no, I think if they want to interview you after the, after the season, they'll, they'll let you know. Um, and uh, if they want to bring in a new coach, they'll let you know. So his status still um, still pretty much unknown, even though I think we're all in agreement that uh, things are trending downward, right, Greg, as far as where it, where he stands? Yeah, I, I think that it's fair to say that, to characterize it as he's on the outside looking in, I guess is how I, I would describe it as of right now. And listen, the path was going to be difficult for him to get the head coach job to begin with. Um, I honestly think as, as kind of a tough a position as this is, the path forward for Mickey was really to light a fire under the team and rip off a bunch of wins and become bowl eligible. That's so much easier said than done yeah. <laughs> based on the situation um, that he inherited and taking over a team midstream with coordinators and coaches that you may not have necessarily picked um, from coordinator to the strength staff and having um, injuries already in the mix and then more injuries on top of that, um, which is something else we'll talk about here in a little bit when it comes to quarterback. But it, it's, it's difficult, but I do think that he's on the outside looking in right now. Um, and I was a little surprised to hear him openly and honestly say that he has not had had those conversations um, because that does lend you to believe that it's not going to be in the cards but stranger things has happened there's always like a parallel that i'm looking at when wisconsin comes here because they they have an interim head coach as well in uh, jim mm -hmm. leonard and you know it's going to be an interesting conversation between uh, jim and <laughs> mickey at midfield when yeah. when they when they uh, play this weekend you know one coach was dealt a good hand when he became the interim head coach and i think that was jim leonard the other coach, Mickey Joseph, wasn't dealt as good of a hand as Jim Leonard was, in my opinion. Jim Leonard's got a pretty solid team still, not not your usual Wisconsin um, team, but still pretty dang good. Um, Mickey Joseph is dealing with so many quarterback issues, an offensive coordinator that you know I think is just kind of in an odd situation right now where he's um, maybe making an offense that's catered toward one quarterback in Casey Thompson, but Casey Thompson can't play or isn't playing, and we'll see later on this week. It sounded like it, um, there, there could be a better chance of him seeing the field this week. So, um, yeah, it's just it was always, like, like you said, Greg, it was always an uphill battle with Mickey Joseph um, and, and his candidacy for this head coaching position. Um, but, you know, it doesn't take away from how good of a guy I think um, Mickey Joseph is, the job that he did on the recruiting trail. Um, boy, I mean, I think we're all fans of Mickey Joseph here, but yeah, totally agree that I'm um, kind of on the outside looking in. Yeah, those two guys, like you mentioned, Jim Leonard and Mickey Joseph, really could not have been dealt yeah. uh, too <laughs> much of yeah. different hands. Yep. I mean, uh, Nebraska fired Scott Frost and named Mickey as a sort of um, uh, pants on fire sort of deal where he was uh, named the interim coach in, in, at Wisconsin. Wisconsin fired Paul Christ when they did in large part, and this is not just speculation, it's uh, something that we have on good authority that all national outlets seem to, have, uh, seem to have said, Wisconsin fired Paul Christ at the time they did in large part to give Jim Leonard a shot to see what do we have here. Um, and he's taken it and run with it. They're three and two since he took over. Yep. Nebraska is two and, uh, two and five since Mickey's taken over. Um, but like you said, I mean, then this is another bigger picture thing to talk about more in depth later, but just to touch on it now, what Mickey has done to set the foundation for um, the, the next coach, whoever that is, um, and just the foundation for this program going forward, um, it can't be understated. And just some of the, the insights he was sharing today from his, his experiences this year, um, 
he, he talked about what it takes to build a competitive roster in the Big Ten compared to the SEC. Sense. I thought that was probably the most interesting part of this whole thing of, of all today was you need depth at the SEC. They're covering all areas of the field, right? In the Big Ten, it's more thumping right in the middle. Which, right in the middle of the field. Yeah, right the you know what? Field. I'm just going to let Steve sort of tee off on that <laughs> just because I know he's the he's, he knows ball and uh, – that's just sort of. I think I do. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he, uh, Mickey talked about needing uh, instead of twelve offense or defensive linemen um, scholarship uh, scholarships on the roster. You need like fifteen to sixteen on offensive line and defensive line each in the Big Ten. So, yeah, I thought I thought it was really interesting to go along with what your point of him kind of thinking big picture about the program was. He also talked about justin jefferson and if you listen to people who questioned why you would offer a, a low three-star justin jefferson out of wherever he was from and why would why would you take him at lsu they, i mean i mean obviously look at justin jefferson right now he's an incredible receiver um starred at lsu he's coming off maybe the game of his life and his short nfl career with the vikings right now and mickey was saying if you go to listen to those people who question him taking justin jefferson Know, he wouldn't be where he is today so yeah, I mean he's he was also I thought it was interesting that he's he's trusting his recruiting and he, and he knows what he's looking for and he's not going to worry about if, if somebody doesn't like anybody that he offers so I thought that was really interesting too. yeah and, th- and then that was obviously a direct response to to a kid JT Fayard uh, Texas quarterback with 6465 210 yep. pounds uh, that picked up an offer here a couple of weeks ago from Nebraska right here at Memorial Stadium um, and we spoke to him here at inside Nebraska as well did an interview with him you can check that out he's going to be back on campus this weekend ironically after Mickey kind of did not directly reference it right. smart. Smart. by he name smart. I'm He's gonna learning. make sure to, to say that he has learned um, on that there was there was a little bit of looking around in that moment in the press conference it was <laughs> funny uh, but yeah you have to trust your evaluations and Steve and I talked about this kind of off camera earlier today it was just like you have to get to that point of a program, right, to where you trust your evaluations because that's what other teams in this league are like, right? If Iowa makes an offer like that or Wisconsin, Minnesota, like you just kind of trust it. Like and Nebraska has to do the same thing. And then last thing um, before uh, we, we talk uh, briefly about the quarterback situation, Greg wanted to tee you up because Mickey talked, shared a lot of recruiting insights too um, about uh, I asked him where – he thinks Nebraska could attack like areas of the country that Nebraska could attack that he thinks they could be successful in and uh, he said not he pretty much said not really like there really aren't any that they're not currently attacking um, or uh, targeting I should say uh, in recruiting that they aren't already you mentioned Texas and uh, states like Louisiana, Georgia. I just I didn't know if you had any thoughts on what he said about that. I thought it was I thought it was interesting, not because like you said that those are new areas. It's kind of the passion that it, and intensity that he talks about. How you have to go attack it. You have to be there. He he mentions a lot about you have to go down there and be present. Um, and we saw that earlier this year when he was down in Georgia with Sean Becton. Like those guys going out and being in high schools and being present, I think matters a lot. And that and it's really honestly it's not just for down south for those kids it's also right here at home too right we saw them go out and go to high school games like that stuff matters and you have to understand like he says often you gotta work and that's what kind of stood out to me about that yeah and then um last thing steve just uh there is still a game to be played on saturday (laughs) yeah that can be lost in the midst of this but i mean today's press conference really was centered around a lot of those bigger picture stuff um and there still is the game to be played 11 a.m. on Saturday against Wisconsin. Badgers are coming in as 13-point favorite. Um, maybe that line drops with the news. Not news, but Casey Thompson. It seems like there's a lot more optimism. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's a lot more optimism. There is a lot more um, that, that he's going to play. But that quarterback situation uh, is a little still in flux right now. Yeah, so if, if Casey Thompson can't go, it's not going to be Chubba Purdy because Chubba Purdy, according to uh, Mickey Joseph, after the game at uh, Michigan, he, he uh, said he had a high ankle sprain on his right foot. Um, after that injury, we saw Chubba on the sideline. He was on crutches. He had that right right boot on his on his foot. So um, he's going to be out for the season most likely. Um, Mickey yep. Joseph said that he's going to have surgery in two to three days. 
So that all eyes will go on Logan Smothers, and Logan Smothers himself is battling some some injuries too after the game against Michigan. Uh, Mickey said that um, Logan was obviously batting battling some injuries for and the past before two that weeks. too. Yeah, yeah <laughs> at, before that. Um, so Nebraska's quarterback room is just beat up, and that's why you saw Jared Sinek, the walk-on second-year player from Hastings, Nebraska. Shout out the Tigers. Um, he was a very prolific, I would say, quarterback in high school in Class B here. I covered him some when I covered high school. He's, he's a guy that can do a little bit of everything, and Mickey Joseph said that today. He can run, he can throw. He's he's just, you know, not your typical six foot five, 220 pound quarterback. He's smaller on a smaller end, around six foot, 200 pounds. Um, but hey, the guy, the kid can sling it, and I'm interested to see, um, maybe not if he gets out there, um, but just, you know, a lot of his teammates like Jarrett Senek, and he's just a fun guy to be around from, from what Travis Velkluck was saying. And he said that, Travis also said that um, Jarrett Senek was impressing with his accuracy in seven on seven drills on Fridays when young guys kind of get out and, and get to do things. So, um, but yeah, I mean, if, if Casey Thompson can't go, it's obviously going to be Logan Smothers. So we're going to see what the, what the offense looks like if, if uh, Casey can't go out there. and. Maybe maybe some RPO action yeah. from Mark Whipple, but we'll <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Um, yeah, not not gonna hold our breath on that one. Yeah. But yeah, obviously with Wisconsin comes in coming in, everybody knows what they're gonna do. They're gonna try to give it to Braylon Allen. How old is he now? He's 18 years old. Uh, was that came up again today. I yeah. laughed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah was well, 17 years old last year. And so yeah, 6'2", 235, 240 pounder. Um, a little bit of tampering news coming from uh, that Braylon is super Allen. super interesting. That was interesting last <laughs> week. And him being week. asked about yeah. that directly is just such a – what a unique <laughs> yeah. time in college yeah. football. Yeah, we're, we're in the wild, wild west. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he denies it, but apparently the story – allegedly uh, Michigan was kind of asking around on Braylon Allen saying, hey, would you want to come play for us next year? So who knows on that end, but it's just going to be another physical – Big Ten West football game like it always is, like Nebraska's been used to the past three, four, four fourth weeks. Fourth straight, fourth straight thousand yard rusher. <laughs> that yeah, they're wow. going to face. It's un, it's just it's a gaunt, it's a gauntlet that we yeah. saw coming sort of when the season yeah. started, but except for uh, Chase Brown, I don't know if we knew exactly right. was, yeah, at least yeah. that Illinois was going to have this type of season. Um, but like we said, Wisconsin thirteen point favorite coming into Memorial Stadium. On Saturday at 11 a.m., the game's scheduled to be on ESPN. Uh, we'll have coverage tomorrow with more press conferences of Mark Whipple and Bill Bush. Uh, Steve will be at Fred Hoiberg's com- uh, press conference tomorrow. Um, coverage throughout the week, previewing the Wisconsin game and more. Uh, coverage of Nebraska basketball at St. John's Thursday. That's all at nebraska.rivals.com. And, um, more updates on the coaching search with uh, all these Matt Rule rumors flying around <laughs> left and right, everywhere you can look in any direction. Um, we'll, we have that stuff up on on our website, and we'll have more uh, YouTube comment on our channel, Inside Nebraska YouTube channel, coming uh, today and throughout the rest of the week. So be sure to check that out. But in the meantime, for Steve Marek and Greg Smith, I'm Zach Carpenter, and we will see you guys again next time.